spell red. Red. L S T E R. All right, you guys. So today we'll be replacing the new, new stock OEM BK1 Turbo because mine is pretty much toast. Um, but yeah, so we're just replacing like the cold side of the turbo and getting rid of the factory blow off valve because I have this and it's just all extra for no reason. So. Also for this turbo, I have a block off plate and a new stainless steel braided line going on it. So, so I'm gonna be step by step showing you how to take off your OEM turbo to swap it for this one, another OEM one. So this is honestly like the only tools you really need for this job. You know, get you a ratchet. One of the screwdrivers where you put the bits onto to take off the intake. Screwdriver to pull the pin off the wastegate. Some vice grips or channel locks if you have. Needle nose. I'm going to be using an impact, but if you don't have one, it's fine. Um, get you an extension. A third or 18 a 17 a 12 and a 10. so first what you want to be starting off with is taking off the intake straight off the turbo i'm going to take it off the turbo inlet so that you can have space you know to work around and then you're going to take off your intercooler piping from the side, just the top part. You don't need to touch onto this. You'll also need to be taking off these two hoses. Also, whatever vacuum lines are connected to the turbo, you'll be taking off as well. So right now, let's just start off with the intake. So you'll be needing this tool to take off the hose clamps and on the intake. Now that you have taken it off the inlet of the turbo, you should take off these hose clamps that are around here and be careful while taking the hose off of here because this will easily snap and then just pull it off and you're good. Now you can take the intake off. Now the intake's out of the way, we start taking off just this portion of the pipe. So if you have like the stock piping still on it, just grab yourself your channel locks or your vice grips and then take the clamps off on each side. Um, but for my case, since I have a turbo access front mount, I need the deep 10 to get this off. As you can see, there's oil all over the turbo, kind of inside the piping. So now just start disconnecting your vacuum lines and should be set. Well, honestly, I just might run a whole new line straight from here to the blow off valve. So right now I'm just gonna start by cracking loose some of the fittings that are connected to the turbo so the oil feed. I believe this is one of the coolant lines 
and here. So for this one, I'm just gonna disconnect it from here. And then, I almost forgot about this one. Get your 17 extension and ratchet and crack loose the oil feed fitting. So you, you can just take it off from the top and leave it down on the bottom. Um, but in my case, since I'm swapping the whole feed line, I'm taking it off from the top and the bottom. And I really quickly, I just installed the stainless steel braided line from the bottom right now. There's the fitting. But now back to taking this apart. So what I just did is that instead of taking off the actual pipes because I'm swapping off the whole turbo, I'm taking off the hoses from here, the hose that connects to here. So also when you take this one off, get ready for there to be coolant that just pours straight out. So what I did to save some of it is just, it'll be here on this side, just push it under and then have it sit right here out of the way. So yeah, just get this off and get this off. We're gonna get to the drain line, like as we're taking out the, the turbo, but you wanna be careful because you don't wanna rip the actual drain hose right there. So now that you took off the other pipes, go to this side and the clamp on the back of the turbo, you can take your 10 mil and just unscrew it from this side all the way, like completely take the bolt and the nut out so that you can get to this side easier. So once you get the first side off, you're just gonna literally rotate it around so you can get this side and unbolt it from here too, or loosen it up so you can just pull it off. So now that you got it off, you just wanna keep it on the side for right now because you're gonna be reusing this as well. To make your life so much easier, so like when you put it back on, have both bolts pointing upward so that you can easily just put it right back instead of struggling like you did before taking it off. So right here on the wastegate, um, on the wastegate lever, you have a pin that sits right here. What you want to do, you want to take the flathead, you want to dig the edge right there, and literally just turn it out. And then once you get it, it'll like, it kind of expand around this. Once it gets like that, you take your needle nose and you just pull it straight off. Do not lose this piece that goes on here. It looks like this. It looks like this. So what you want to do is put the flathead in between like this, turn it out, and then get, grab your needle nose and just pull the rest of the way out. You will be reusing that, so keep that in mind. And then now you can just pull off the actuator. Now if you haven't done it already, go grab your channel locks or your vice grip so you can take off the clamp from the oil drain line and be careful with that line so now what you want to do is once you take off the drain line you want to now take a mallet and hit like right here on the back of the turbo but make sure you have the wastegate disconnected before you even do anything like that um this line will just finish taking it off like as we put the turbo off to make it easier. Um but just hit the back side with a little mallet. You don't have to hit it too hard, but hit it hard enough so that you can see it move. And then you should see some sort of like separation going on there. Once you got the turbo separated, you should have some you should see now that you got some wiggle room. And you're literally just gonna wiggle the turbo out. All right, so everyone's situation might be a little bit different than mine. In my case, though, I have a block off plate and I'm just swapping over the wastegate. So you put every, literally everything back where it was before. And now you just do a reverse install. All right, so now what you wanna do is, right? See how there's a little pin 
right here you want to line up the turbo with this and you know you have it lined up so like the turbo won't like spin anymore and it'll be stuck like in place kind of rotate it a little bit left and right and then once it's on you'll you'll know but then now you want to get all your hoses back on from where they were so get your clamps back on here here and down there and the oil drain and then you'll be putting in your oil feed right after you get your v-band clamp on and all that <laughs> just broke the bolt why 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 what? What? The V band. So now I gotta go look for another one. <laughs> so I just replaced the bolt down in there, but hopefully you don't snap yours like I did. <laughs> um, other than that, put your oil line, oil feed line back on make sure that your hose clamps are tight all around here here then up there get your vacuum lines back on I'm praying that we don't have an exhaust leak from the straight from the turbo if so then I'm gonna have to pick the video back up another day when I get another OEM bolt but hopefully this one does the job but yeah as you can see now the bolt right there and this one down here have them facing upwards so it makes it easier when you put them back on you can just tighten from up top but now i'm gonna put back on the little clip that goes into the wastegate plug the wastegate vacuum line back in put the intercooler piping back on and then turn it on so now the clip is back in now i'll we'll put the intake back on the turbo inlet and then after that, do the intercooler piping. But yeah, so where I left off a few days ago was, I think I was putting on the intercooler piping and the intake. Make sure you got that all in. Remember to crank down on your couplers and all that because you do not want boost leaks. Make sure you get your intake back on, intercooler back on, all your hoses. Um, before you turn the car on, too, go into this fuel, fuse box and take out your fuel pump fuse, the injector fuse, and the ignition. Once you pull the fuses, though, Go try to turn on the car, have it crank over for like 10 seconds or so, so that it builds like enough pressure in the oil system and then the turbo and all that, so you have oil flowing through. If you did what I did, you drop like like a gallon of coolant everywhere. Um, make sure that you add more coolant back in the radiator because you lost a shit ton of coolant like for sure like if you anything like if you did what i did you freaking dropped like a whole quart all right though uh, i hope you guys enjoyed the video um please leave me like something in the comments like any tips questions anything that you want to know uh questions about the jenny anything again though thank you for watching Stay tuned for the next video. The next video I'll be posting will be the Megan Racing transmission mount install. Um, and that's pretty quick. So it'll be like a quick, probably like a five minute video. And stay tuned for the next one. Hope y'all enjoyed. Later.